Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 35 of my Java video tutorial series. This time, I'm actually going to take a request from somebody out there and do a whole entire tutorial on nothing but common Java errors that I see. Well, one common Java error that I see, and I'm just going to keep going through these as I'm typing here. I just have a list, and I'm going to keep punching them out till I cover them all. Let's say you need to use a math library. There's a common Java error. The need for a library that you do not import. So there's the first one. Then you have the actual class definition. Well, it's perfectly legal to go public class Java lesson. 35 in this situation. And here's another error. You do not have your curly braces properly closed. One way to solve that as you're programming is to say end of bonk, like that. Now you know what each curly brace is associated with. Another common error that I see is you guys for some reason are calling these classes private. That You cannot do that. The only thing you can have a class be is either public, abstract, or final. And I'm going to slow down on some of these, but I think some of them are pretty easy to catch pretty much immediately. And then on top of that, you can only have one public class per file. Something else that I see that isn't quite so common is an error that says cannot make a static reference to the non-static method. What that means is you go in and you type in private void and then let's say this says print something and then you call for said method from the public static void main function and you cannot do that and as you can see here eclipse is sort of like helping me out here it'll also teach you exactly what's going on that's why you should get eclipse because eclipse is free now this is very easy to fix just go in here and just type in static and if you don't remember you use static whenever you want to be able to execute a method that isn't part of the class definition and if you forgot private means that this is a method that is not visible outside of the class. All right, so let's go on to unresolved compilation problem. Basically what that means is Eclipse told you you screwed up along the way and you ignored Eclipse. So let's say you also make a common error, like you put in a capitalization where you're not supposed to, and we type in big number like that is equal to blah, 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 blah. Well, Eclipse is gonna flip out here to put a red line here and put a little error message over here and it's gonna tell you exactly how to fix it, which is great. It's gonna give you all kinds of different little things you could do here in this situation. None of them are gonna work though, but you can just simply go in there and put the regular lowercase i in there and then your problems are gonna be solved. So unresolved compilation problem means that Eclipse told you that you messed up and you did not fix the problem. And this code is all available underneath this video and everything's heavily commented. If you get the error, a string literal isn't properly closed, that probably means you're not using Eclipse, first off, because it's kind of hard to even do this. So that means that you went in here and you tried to create a string, and then you started typing a string error, and then you hit enter, but you see that's a problem because Eclipse actually just fixed this for you. But either way, and then if you go up here and erase that, it'll actually put a plus sign in there on top of that to try and force you to do this, right? We'll just go is occurring. So this is what that means. If I then go in here like this and then go like that, obviously this is an error that's only going to occur in a text editor. This right here is an error, and you can see it's underlined there. You cannot break strings off across multiple different lines. And then we'll get to one of the most popular errors. We'll go public static void main string brackets args. The main function is messed up, sometimes not used at all, many times in a lot of the problems that I receive from you guys. So make sure that it's public, static, void, main, all write uppercase letters or lowercase letters whenever they're supposed to be. Don't forget the brackets and don't forget args. Very, very, very common error that I see. And the error you're gonna see is exception in thread main, no such method error, and then it's gonna say colon main. You're gonna use it all the time, at least for now, until you start doing some things on the web. So just memorize it, it's easier to memorize. Let's just just imagine that I didn't delete that method up here. Just put it in here properly. Private, static, void, print something. So it's back there again, even though it doesn't technically print anything. Another error that I see all the time is people call for this method up here by going like this and then putting a semicolon. That's another error and you need to put these little brackets in there. See, the little error went away. You always have to put those brackets in there whenever you're using any type of method. And basically the error you're going to get is can't be resolved to variable because it assumes that it's a variable and not a method. Now you know how to fix that. Another thing that I see all the time is somebody will tell 
type in int, I'm just gonna say number in this situation is equal to 12, and then they'll go string another number, and they'll type in number. They'll try to take this integer and turn it into a string. That is not possible, that is not the way you do it anyway. One way that you can do it, though, is to type in integer to string, and then put little brackets around this guy, and there you go, all the errors go away. So that's how you would turn an integer into a string and then save it as a string. You can't do it in a very direct format. And another thing, just so if you wanted to know this, you type in int number is equal to integer parse int, and then you wanted to change that string back into a number again, well, that's exactly how you're gonna do that with parse int. There's another error. Type it in something, another num, and then typing in another number, see? There's another error that's just naming things incorrectly, so that's something else you wouldn't wanna do. And then trying to use variables multiple different times, meaning declaring int number and int number again, well, you can get rid of that problem by just typing in number two. And there you go. So a whole bunch of other different errors that I see all the time. Another thing that might be confusing because the error might not be immediately apparent. Let's say that you tried to create a dimension, which is an object and I've used in many, many past tutorials. So if you type this in here without bringing in the dimension library, it's gonna hit you with an error that doesn't make any sense. It's gonna say can't be resolved to a type. That's it. That doesn't really tell you anything, but actually this little pop-up box here, and if you can't see this, you can view this as a HD video full screen. One of the options under here, it says four quick fixes available. One of them is to import dimension. If you double click on that, see, there it is. It just imported that library for you. So Eclipse is smart enough to catch that as well, even in situations where the error is kind of hard to make sense of. Another thing I see all the time is you guys try to call methods that aren't in a class. So let's say you go long, random long, equal to lesson 34 dot round. And this is all part of learning a programming language. You can see here I'm calling a class that I did create called lesson 34, but I'm calling for a method that doesn't exist inside of it called round. And I'm gonna just throw this in here real quick. Let's just say double pi is equal to 3.14. Now you're gonna see that round says the method round is undefined for the type lesson 34. So there's another thing, it's calling a method that doesn't exist. And normally this isn't done this way where it's blatantly you just mess up this badly. It's normally a capitalization error or some other misspelling or whatever is the reason why that sort of stuff pops up. Just to stick with that, I'm just sort of like improv in a lot of this stuff here. Let's say that you did actually want to use the round function. Well, a lot of you guys get into the habit of going pi, which is this double right here, and you get into a habit, mainly if you've worked in other programming languages, into thinking that you can go pi, which is the variable here of the field, and then call the round method on it. And that does not work. If you want to actually round pi, you have to go math.round like that, and then throw pi inside of it. And that, like I said, that's an error. Actually, experienced programmers have a tendency to make. Another thing that I see a lot is let's jump out of here actually for a second, create another method. I sort of broke my own rule, didn't I? See, main, so I'm gonna go in here and go end of main. Take the extra couple seconds, it'll save you a lot of time, especially if you're writing big programs. Public static void get stuff. And let's say I go in here and I type in number one and number two, there's my method. Uh-oh, another error. Why is there an error here? Because whenever you define a method, you need to also tell it what type you are working with, the type of these variables that are inside of here. And another error is the calling of this method. So let's say if I go get stuff, and I put in here 1.234, and then I type in four inside of there. Well, why am I getting an error here? The method you're actually gonna see is the method is not applicable for the arguments, and that is indeed true. What's this, a double? What's this, an integer? What's this, an integer? What's this, a double? See, these have to match up whenever you call these different methods. Another error that I see a lot is syntax error on token, and then it's normally followed with a quote, a comma. It basically doesn't know what you wanna do, so it just sorta of throws up random things all over the screen trying to figure out what you missed. And this can be caused in multiple different ways. One of the most common ways that I see is, let's say somebody goes double, some num, and then they go add them. So they're calling a method. And then they go lesson five. 
and then they pass in variables. Again, this is a thing that experienced programmers sometimes do because this is a normal common way to be able to call different methods in other programming languages. But it doesn't work that way in Java. You want to do pretty much this exact same thing in Java. You need to cut that out of there and put class first and then follow that up with your actual class. You can see again that that error also is going to go away. Another thing that I've seen a lot is let's say you're trying to come in here and create an integer. And again, this is something that comes along with programmers that have used other languages. Let's say you want to create an integer array and you type in new and then you say well I want to have 10 spaces this is going to be a multi-dimensional array and it's going to be like that followed by int. That's completely not right. It's semi-right in other languages though and that's the reason why people do it. If you want to define a multi-dimensional array in Java you need to go like this and then go int array is equal to new int like this and then go 10 and then go 10 and there you go. The world's all happy because you defined your multi-dimensional array the Java way. So again, there's another common error that I see. Back in lesson 33 of this tutorial series, I created a private method and it was called git file info. And this is lesson 33 and you go git file info. And there are no arguments or anything here. But if you put your little mouse over top of this, what you're going to see is the method is not visible. The reason why is get file info inside of the class lesson 33 is a private method. You cannot access private methods even if you put the class name before the method. And another common thing is local variable may not have been initialized. How you get that error is you create a string, for example, like this. And this is all perfectly fine and legal. The only problem is if you then go in here and let's say in a situation like in your code for some reason or another, how many never gets a value? Well, there's your problem. That's whenever you're going to get the local variable and they not have been initialized. So how do you solve that problem? Well, you could do something like just coming in here like that, throw an equal sign, and then you solve that problem because you basically put nothing inside of this string rather than just leaving it that way. And then in integers, it's very common to have zero inside of them and so forth and so on. It's always a good idea to give default values. Another thing that I saw actually yesterday was caused because of a misunderstanding of the method length in regards to how length works with arrays versus how length works with strings. They're completely different. And the error that you get is cannot be resolved. So that doesn't really help very much. So I'm going to show you here exactly what I mean. So let's say we go system out, print line, and then inside of this we go how many, which is a string, and we follow that with dot length. You cannot do that. That is an error. However, you could see up here with the int array, you could come in here and go int array, and that error is going to go away. However, you could not do int array followed by these two brackets here, but you could go in here and type in how many with those brackets inside of it. So this is how you get the length for a string versus how you get the length for an array. And then this is a weird one. I've only seen this a couple times, but it's a misunderstanding of what prefix operators do versus what a postfix operator does. So let's say if you go in here and create an integer and you go int one is equal to one, and then you go y int is equal to one. Then what we're going to do inside of this is we're going to go x int is equal to y int, and we're going to go plus plus. This is what we call a post fix. Now you might be surprised if both of these are equal to 1, you would think that the value of x int is going to be equal to 2, right? Well, let's come in here and see if you're right. x int, throw that in there, and then just go x int. I'm also going to have to call get stuff. No, I'm just going to put 1 inside of there and 1.2. All right, execute it again. And there you can see x int is equal to 1. So that doesn't make sense, but it does because the way that Postfix works is it actually assigns the value to x int of y int and then adds 1 to y int, this variable right here. However, if you would come in here and get rid of this and put the plus signs ahead of time and execute it, you're going to see that the value is 2. And there it is. So that explains sort of the differences between prefix versus postfix. And then the last thing I'm going to cover, I also see a lot. It's a misunderstanding of how switch works. So let's say you go int day is equal to one like that. And then you type in switch and you type in day. And then you do something like 
case the value of day is equal to one and then you want to print something out on the screen like this and let's say you want to do a Monday and then we'll come in here and then we just change this to two and this to three and this to four and then this to default like that and then this is Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday well, what we're doing here is we're checking if that value is equal to one and if that ha occurs well we want to print Monday out on the screen so let's see what actually happens as you can see, it prints Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the reason why is if you do not put a break statement after each one of these guys, if any of them are true, everything that proceeds it will also be true. So definitely make sure that you put those break statements there. And if you execute it now, you're going to see that only Monday shows up. So I think I covered almost all the most common Java errors. If there's anything that I missed, leave a comment below. Or if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Otherwise, till next time.